rules apply as always uh, use the raise your hand function and we'll call on you um, to ask Sean a question just introduce yourself anyone want to start first Vic go ahead hey Sean long time no see how are you doing not bad how are you pretty good thank you um so meeting familiar faces tomorrow and yet it's been a while so maybe they're not as familiar um what are your thoughts going into the game against the spirit tomorrow yeah i mean um i, I mean i don't know i mean i don't know what they're going to put on the field i don't know i mean for us it's I, i'm i think about I, I don't really think about them um i think we have enough things we have to worry about on our end um we're assuming they're going to have pretty much a full roster, maybe minus one or two. Obviously, Hachi, with the injury she picked up in in camp, I don't know what her status is going to be. But um, you know, we we both teams are in a situation where it's you know we're, you're running out of time a little bit. Um, obviously, we you know we have four games in hand, but you know I think for us it's just a matter of finding ways again to to build a little bit of momentum. You know the. Um, the last game we played was the Chicago game and not having the, the um, Angel City game probably didn't help us just to sort of maybe work our way out of it. But, you know, we're, we're trying to do the right things and players are competing and putting themselves in good spots. And we just have to get back to playing the way we want to play and dictating the game. But, you know, in regards to Washington, we already know what they're about, how the quality they have. And um, it's two good teams that are going to be matched up against each other and regardless of who's on the field. You know, if it's their full roster, if it's our full roster, obviously we're still missing Devin Caro. But um, yeah, it doesn't matter if you play a team a thousand times or one time. Anyone can beat anybody on any given day in this league. So you got to show up and be ready to play on an important night. You mentioned having all of those games in hand and having this um, unexpectedly extended break, and which is going to mean a, a loaded back end of your schedule. How do you prepare? Or something like that you don't you have to take the only games that we have in hand is the game tomorrow that's the only game we have in hand um because that's the only one that matters as the season wears on then we'll manage the players the best we can and take care of their bodies and so on but until we get to that stage um we got to put ourselves in situations where those games actually mean something um so yeah the only game we have in hand right now is is the washington game and after that, the next game we'll have in hand will be the Portland game. And, you know, the four games in hand, they don't mean anything right now until we get to them when, when they matter. So uh, Washington's all that's on our mind. But we have to manage. We have to take care of the players and rest them the properly. And, and the club has to do what they need to do to make sure they get the, the access to the proper recovery stuff, which they've done all year. So. And speaking of we taking care of the players' health and safety, we're kind of in a real climate situation right now where almost the entire country is just roasting. Is there talk in the league about how to manage that going forward? Because it seems like this isn't something that's going to go away anytime soon. That's out of my pay grade. <laughs> There's a lot of things I like to talk to the league about, but I don't. Um, I'm not one of those people. Um, people get paid to do their jobs and hopefully they do their jobs. But I think all you can do is, you know, at, at kickoff, you, you do the wet bulb and you see what the humidity is like. And, you know, I will say that the league has done a better job of that in terms of over the years and making sure that the players get breaks as they need. But I think each location, each region will be based on that particular night and what the conditions are. You know, if the game's at one o'clock, then you're probably having a different discussion. But 7.30, you know, here or there, you know, maybe it storms a little bit and you get, get a cool off, but who knows? I, we, we all know the weather here, so... Um, there's nothing the league can do about the weather. All they can do is manage what the players need to be able to perform at the highest level without risking their well-being. Um, and I've, I've yet to see that they haven't done that, at least this year. Um, but I think now we're getting to the heart of the summer where, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident that they're, they're taking everything into consideration. So um, the games will be played. It's just how are they managed. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, no problem. Chris, go ahead. I apologize. My camera's still screwed up, but uh, you probably don't want to see what I look like anyway right now there. I'd, I had a question um, off the field about this Friday's uh, game. It's uh, uh, it's 
Pride Night. You've got uh, there's a big celebration around it. And I wanted to ask you about the uh, significance and how uh, important it is for it to come off well. This isn't this isn't your garden variety promotion. It's not a Thursday Thursday or anything like that or Bat Night. How important is it to uh, to for this uh, pregame, the shrining, and everything to come off well uh, for the team, Coach? Yeah, look, I, I I know the importance of tomorrow night, um, and it's one that I think should be celebrated at the highest order. And you know, the players that are in that locker room that, you know, I think for years maybe didn't celebrate or wasn't celebrated maybe as it, as it needed to be um, or at all. And now we're in a situation where, you know, I was, I was able to see how powerful it was and important it was for our players to wear the rainbow numbers last year or the pride numbers last year. Sorry. So, um, and I know how much that meant to them and, the opportunity to see them put those jerseys on again tomorrow and, and the significance of it, I think is, is massive. And, you know, I, I wouldn't do anything to take that away from them, nor should anybody. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward then to having that, that, that pride night. I'm looking forward to celebrating that with the players. I'm looking forward to, you know, win, lose, or draw. It's a, it's a bigger meaning. Um, and it's a meaning that probably is undervalued and under celebrated. And I think it's, it's something that, um, you know, we all know the backstory in so many different avenues, but tomorrow it's about the players that are um, are going to be fortunate enough to be able to celebrate that. And um, we, we are really looking forward to celebrating it with them because, you know, that's uh, it's an important part of their life. And this is bigger than life. This is bigger than sport. And the opportunity for them to be recognized and have their community recognized is um, sometimes more meaningful than 90 minutes or is one more than 90 minutes, not sometimes. 